All right, kids, if there was one thing that I could bring to 2021 from the year 2020, it would be versus battles. Versus battles are live streamed and feature two artists, rappers or singers or producers, alternating playing their songs for people vibing on the internet. There's been a lot of great matchups so far, but the one that we, the people, deserve, but will unfortunately never get, is Prince versus Michael Jackson. Now, you've probably heard me singing Prince around the house a lot more than I used to when I could only name some of his bigger hits. This personal Prince playlist all started when Big Brother by Kanye West came on one day, which is produced by DJ Toomp and features a sample from It's Gonna Be Lonely from Prince's self-titled second album. Sure, I already knew that song, but a lot of Prince's work was still new to me, and I am now a really big fan. Growing up, when I visited my dad, he always played Michael Jackson. In the late 80s, that meant bad. And that was very influential for me, even though I'm more of a off-the-wall type myself. And much of my adulthood was spent repeatedly listening to Michael Jackson instead of Prince. And no, it didn't, or doesn't, have to be one or the other. But that's not how it was presented to me most of my life. It was Prince versus MJ. Prince or MJ. So today we're going to look into why this is, because I don't get it. Why didn't I listen to both Prince and MJ? And why don't I know anyone who likes them equally? Was this a rivalry between the artists? Was there a feud, a beef, or merely a competition as to who was going to be the best in the 80s? But as far as 80s competitions on a scale from 1 to 5, comparing MJ and Prince to other duels in that decade where one is a symbolic, not real rivalry, a fake feud like Reagan and the war on drugs, and 5 is the we both want the same thing and we have to go through one another in order to get it, a la Magic versus Bird. I'd give Prince versus MJ a four, just above a we can coexist but stay in your lane and we may not work together, but it would be better if we did Stallone versus Schwarzenegger type of thing. Even these two would go on to share the silver screen. As you'll see today, Prince and MJ never worked together, but they did share a stage once, which might have actually started this competition. It all started August 20th, 1983 at the James Brown and B.B. King One Special Night at the Beverly Center in L.A. James Brown was performing and somehow spotted MJ in the crowd or knew he was in attendance and invited him up onto the stage. I mean, by this time, MJ was already the rhinestone glove, the moonwalk, the jacket with the zippers on it, a childhood prodigy who had mastered performing while in grade school. So when MJ did his thing that night, he sung for 15 seconds, moonwalked for another 15, and bowed out, impressing James Brown, his mentor. Now what happens next is key depending on perspective. I have this perception that MJ was hyper competitive. I'll explain later. MJ somehow knew Prince was also in attendance that night and told James Brown to call him to the stage. Now, did MJ say, call Prince up, it's going to be great? Did he say, there's an artist named Prince out there, give him a chance to show what he can do? Or did he say, bring Prince up, see if he can top what I just did? Whatever the case, James Brown said, who? I mean, he didn't know who Prince was. After being called up, Prince was literally carried to the stage on his bodyguard's back. Prince started off his set playing guitar, or tried to play this guitar, which was provided by someone in James Brown's band, but it malfunctioned. Then Prince transitioned to taking off his shirt and dancing. He kind of started singing, then he tried to swing on a light on the side of the stage, but it wasn't bolted down to anything, so Prince fell, and the light toppled on top of the crowd. This wasn't his finest moment. Prince knew it, MJ knew it, and James Brown knew it. Before I continue, at this point in Prince's career, he definitely wasn't the symbol, he wasn't associated with the color. He was, however, an endlessly talented virtuoso performer who already released 1999, which was a great album. MJ knew that Prince could play every instrument. Back to the story. Legend has it that Prince was so embarrassed, and MJ found it embarrassing, that right after the James Brown performance, he waited outside of the venue in his limo, ready to run over Michael Jackson and his sister Latoya. It didn't happen, but Prince and MJ would soon be on a crash course. Next, Prince, well, and everybody else, would have to watch MJ and producer Quincy Jones win a record eight Grammys from a record 12 nominations in February of 1984, using Thriller and songs from that album to beat out Prince and 1999 in the process. See, in 1979, Michael Jackson released Off the Wall, again, my favorite album of his, but he was dissatisfied as the album didn't receive as many awards as he thought it should, so 
He created Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. Competitive. But even with Michael Jackson having such a classic music video like Thriller, Prince was about to do something MJ couldn't, create a critically acclaimed movie, which is what he did for Purple Rain. Well, apparently, MJ needed to see this movie and he did not approve of it. Meanwhile, Purple Rain, the album, made Prince a household name, and Prince beat out MJ in the 85 American Music Awards. With Prince and Michael Jackson now being the two biggest stars in music, with all due respect to Whitney Houston and Madonna, Quincy Jones sought out for the two artists to collaborate. Jones figured the best opportunity to do so was on We Are The World, a benefit song which featured dozens of musicians. Prince didn't want to be a part of the project, whether it was because he didn't like the song or because he thought he was too bad. Foreshadowing. Lionel Richie tried to convince him to sing on the song too, as did Quincy Jones. And Prince offered to play guitar in the song, but Quincy said that he wanted Prince to sing right next to Mike, and that backfired. The song was recorded after the American Music Awards that I mentioned earlier, and Prince's manager told him to say that the reason he couldn't be a part of it was because he was sick, and advised Prince not to go partying that night, but he did, against his manager's wishes. Also, look at Prince's troll job on stage during the 10-year anniversary of We Are The World. I think I'm getting a good idea of what Prince's motivations are. Then came bad. Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones figured that the next best way to get the two artists together was on that song from Michael Jackson's album of the same name. According to legend, Prince was receptive of it at first until he realized that the opening lyrics would say, your butt is mine. You know, that Wesley Snipes character, right. that, that would have been me. <laughs> so what's up? To put it better, the first line of that song is, your butt is mine. Your butt is mine. Okay. Now I said, who gonna sing that to whom? Because you sure ain't singing it to me. And I sure ain't singing it to you. So right there we got, you know, right there we got a problem. According to Quincy Jones, there was a meeting between the two stars at Mike's house, where Prince kept referring to Michael as Camille. And Prince gave Michael a box filled with Tootsie Rolls and handcuffs. MJ thought it had something to do with voodoo. By the way, Prince even re-recorded the song and sent it back to MJ. Prince acknowledged that Bad would be a hit without him. It was. And while MJ worked with other big name stars like Stevie Wonder, Mick Jagger, Paul McCartney, and Janet Jackson, Prince was involved with lesser known groups and artists that he vibed with. However, Prince did give songs to other artists, he wrote songs for other artists, or other artists' biggest hits came from remaking songs he made. When the 90s arrived, both Prince and Michael Jackson's career trajectories changed due to numerous reasons, including contract and record labor disputes, creative changes, and legal battles. For which I don't think Prince ever spoke ill of MJ when he was on trial, but instead, when the media pitted them against one another, Prince said stuff like this. Who would win in a fist fight, you or Michael Jackson? <laughs> But then there's this from Mike. Prince also came with this. MJ has had plastic surgery a time or three. I kind of see this as a dig at MJ too. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's more that I could add, like MJ going to Prince concerts to check out his show and compare technologies, Prince beating MJ in a game of ping pong, MJ saying that he doesn't want Prince to kill himself due to comparisons between the two of them. Oh, and Prince slapping his bass in MJ's face at a Prince concert with Will I Am and Chris Tucker. Why was Prince playing the bass in my face? <laughs> what are you doing here? As I close, I still don't know if Prince versus MJ was a feud, beef, competition, whatever. Maybe it was just something between their fans, like Marvel versus DC. I can understand an artist wanting to be the best, highly recognized, and most critically acclaimed. 
the one who sells the most records and wins the most awards. But it doesn't mean that as fans, we can't like or appreciate both of them. It doesn't have to be equally either. But I got to say, as an adult, I prefer Prince. Just look at their Super Bowl halftime performances. For instance, sure, MJ's was iconic. I mean, people passed out because he merely took off his glasses. But Prince performed playing like three different electric guitars, singing live with his mic on in the rain, wearing heels. Take it from me, who made videos about Jordan versus LeBron. What I've learned is that you have to give people their flowers while they're still with us. And that is best taught by Prince. After all of his trolling, he was preparing to go on tour when MJ died and discontinued rehearsals immediately. He reportedly locked himself in a room for days and was distraught, later saying that it's always sad when a loved one dies, in reference to MJ. He also credited MJ with pushing him as an artist. Before Prince died, he performed some of MJ's songs in concert. So I'll leave you with this, and we're going to be all right. Oh.